Good morning, everybody. Welcome to your last uh, keynote session here at ONS. I hope that everyone has had a great week. Um, so I'm back on the stage after our demo on Tuesday. Uh, Heather Kirksey, uh, VP of Community and Ecosystem for LF Networking. And I have uh, an immense joy and honor this morning to be with a panel of ONAP leadership. And for, I have to say, one of the like few times in my career, I have the joy of sharing this stage with a bunch of women. Um, I have been the token woman on so many panels in my career, and it is so awesome and fun to be up here with all of you. So thank you all. So a round of applause, actually. <laughs> All right, so um, I'd like to go through and introduce my panelists. So um, first up here, we have uh, Ala Goldner from, uh, from Amdocs. She's the director in, um, of technical strategy and standardization. She is a TSC member of ONAP, and we just sort of did our first uh, TSC uh, meritocracy elections um, within uh, ONAP, so I think that's something you can be quite proud of. Um, and she is one of the chairs of the use case subcommittee. So all if you just want to say a few words about yourself as we start. Yeah, so um, just probably something interesting that, you know, I two years ago, then I decided that I want to change jobs. I decided that I want to try something new and uh, go for an open source. And this is how I actually joined the MTOX. Haven't regretted so far, but... Uh, for this journey, extremely interesting, and we are going to touch it and discuss it a bit, and also, you know, speaking of ONAP status and of our position and what we are doing in ONAP as, as company representative and as women. Yeah. All right, and next up, we have uh, Catherine Lefebvre, uh, AVP of Network and Shared Services at AT&T, and also our brand new elected TSC chair of um, ONAP, and um, sort of our first TSC chair after our migration um, into meritocracy as a TSC. So, you know, I think that that is an awesome achievement. So, welcome, Catherine. Thank you so much, Heather. So, uh, yes, it has been uh, uh, a, a long year since we have launched ONAP, and um, I've been since in the, in the in section. So uh, first of all, I was working on the open sourcing of the account platform, which was the software defined network uh, platform that we were building in house. And after one year and a half, I think we are currently working on our third release. And I have the honor, uh, thanks to the vote of confidence of the community, to be the ONAP chair. Cool. Thank you. Great. And then next up, we've got Helen Chen, who is a principal architect for global technology solutions at Huawei. And she is the uh, PTL of the ONAP integration project um, and has spent uh, 18 years, I believe you said the other day, in the open source community. Eight years. Uh, okay. Oh, eight years. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, that, maybe there's a dot in my notes. <laughs> Thank you, Heather. And also, good morning um, for everyone. Um, Yes, 80 years is already a long time, not yeah. 18 years. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, maybe it feels like 80 years, but yeah. All right. <laughs> 80 years uh, in the open source community, actually actively are uh, playing with that. And um, our recent project is uh, OLAP. And also my other passion uh, is uh, in the uh, innovation. And also I worked with um, a very broad range of technology. You cannot imagine, my first job was build a nuclear reactor. And right now in the city world also has been working with IT. You're right, actually I have more than 18 years working experience in the high tech. My current big title and passion is a PTO of integration project of OLAP. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, cool. And uh, next up, we have uh, uh, Lingli Deng from uh, China Mobile. She is a senior technical manager of open network um, uh, industry. Um, let see. Uh, the, and sort of with the industry promotion lab, you, over, you help oversee that for China Mobile. So, um, and you are also on the TSC and were the founding TSC vice chair, I believe, for ONAP and used to serve as a board member for OPNFE as well. <laughs> uh, yes, I, I think I've, I've been very lucky, uh, you know, when China Mobile and along with several other service providers decided to actually, um, you know, uh, invest more and even leading some of the open source communities to accelerate our uh, network transformation journey. 
I was part of that since day one from our company. I started at OPNV and then OpenO and now ONAP. So it's, it has been a quite incredible journey and um, we now have a dedicated team working you know, um, specifically on ONAP and we see their great value of you know, leveraging that and working with our partners across the industry. And that's it. I'm very glad to be here and excited that you know, we have so many female leadership inside this community. Yeah, great. All right, and last but not least, we have uh, Ji Hui Li, um, who is a senior architect at VMware um, uh, in the uh, network intelligence architecture for the uh, cloud uh, group at VMware. And um, you are the, uh, you have been leading and being the PTL for the MultiVim project, which is obviously, I think, very important as we look at architectural transformation ahead for um, you know, NFV, SDN, and, and ONAP in general. Thank you, Lair. Actually, I'm very happy to hear to join all the excellent women. And actually, I have been leading the you know, development uh, efforts and architecture of the NFA product in VMware and how to make them better integrate with the ecosystem. I have been very tightly involved into different kind of you know, open source communities, such as Big Data and OpenStack. And I'm very happy also the committers of OpenStack and ONAP also. And I'm very happy VMware is more active today to contribute more open source world. I'm very happy to be here. Great. All right, so um, now that we've all been introduced, let's continue on uh, with the panel. So um, you know, my first question actually is to you, Catherine, um, as a newly elected TSC chair, um, with the exciting but perhaps daunting task of looking ahead over the next year, um, what are the sort of the biggest you know, sort of either challenges or your hopes or expectations for success uh, for ONAP in this coming year? Yeah, where, where are some yeah. of maybe the focus areas you plan to, to look at as a leader? Yes, so uh, up to now, I was focusing really on the ex execution plan of any release of ONAP, working closely uh, with Ellen, uh, not only at the time of the integration, but also ensuring that uh, what we are delivering uh, is aligned with the expectation of the community. So what I will do as a chair is with, and support it not only by myself, but also by the other TSC members. And don't neglect the fact that we have a high expectation of PTLs and they need our supports, as well as our subcommittee chair. So with all this group of people, um, what we would like to achieve is continue to become a seamless own app in the sense that we would like to remove any identity uh, or print flute from AT&T or China Mobile because we were working together to create the own app, but we don't want that it becomes an AT&T own app thing or it can become a China Mobile own app thing. I believe maybe Lingli, you agree. It should be an own app community things at the end. So it would be important to, uh, even if we have um, an end user authority group, which is composed by the, the operators, it will also be important to consider what the third party vendors uh, will be able to deliver to meet the expectation of the operators. And also consider what the cloud infrastructure, uh, because it's a big ecosystem, there are multiple parties, can support uh, from, from uh, virtual uh, network uh, possibilities because they are helping us a lot uh, by uh, giving us some free laps as well. So try to demystify, uh, try to go to more meritocratic while we are still considering uh, the operator needs because at the end uh, we are delivering this platform uh, for the operator and uh, try to move in a more agile way. Uh, so far, you know, we are reaching milestone after milestone. It's a long cycle. I think there is an eagerness when you move to production to have more frequent builds, so you can have a kind of a retrospective earlier. You can understand earlier what the future feature uh, will be delivered. It will also help Ellen uh, to be well prepared. So try to reduce uh, maybe not the life cycle, but try to deliver more often. So a lot of improvement um, have been discussed over the past days. So we will have our backlog as a TSC uh, based on uh, what type of improvement and lesson learned uh, we have collected 
since we are already set up since more than 1.5 years. Thank you. Were you about to say something, Alan? Or no? I'm fine. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, thank you, Catherine. Uh, yeah. Definitely, uh, I really appreciate your help in past. And uh, um, the OLAP could successfully deliver to you. And right now, in the third one, uh, to uh, yesterday's status, I was running the integration on weekly. We are still in very good shape, and at least day one gave me a good night. <laughs> so I appreciate, and also definitely looking for our next release doubling will be uh, more stable, and uh, a lot of um, things uh, could be improved even more with your leadership. Awesome. So uh, next question, uh, Lingley, um, you know, sort of coming from a service provider perspective, I and mean, we uh, we. Certainly here you know, from, from Catherine, sort of as a TSE chair, but also as a service provider, but specifically as a service provider, <coughs> you know, what, what is your sort of biggest uh, desire out of uh, you know, seeing how ONAP develops over, over the next year? Um, right, so, because um, I'm moving from the standards background, and you know, uh, standards are very important from, for, for our telecom industry. So um, I think um, we see a service provider perhaps three layers of values that a community like ONAP could provide. The first, one, the first layer is actually the open reference architecture, which I think ONAP has been doing a very, very good job in actually unifying all the sorts about, you know, across the industry, how the next generation operating support system would be look like. The ideas or concept of about separating design time and the run time, and also the model-driven approach, and also the um, data collection uh, analytics, and policy-driven automation close loop. Um, I think those are the ideas that has been, you know, putting uh, all across the industry. Going anywhere, any organizations, any company, any service provider, those ideas are, you know, planned. And um, um, taking to China Mobile's case, we are actually doing our next generation um, OSS assistant design and also taking reference to that um, architecture. So I think uh, that is a huge value, you know, um, out of the, this community. And the second level, I think, would be, you know, um, you know, decoupling those modules and provide reference implementation of the workflow, um, the APIs, and also the modules the models between them. So um, it's not that saying that the community has to deliver production level source code, but by having you know, demonstration use cases and also you know, testing interoperability between different commercial solutions against this platform, we would know that um, based on this architecture, based on those specifications, those different modules could interoperable together. And it would project the future that the vision that you know all our partners could take a role in this big picture, but not having to dictating one service provider or any vendor to provide a NAP platform as a whole. So I think that is the second level of value that we could gain from this community, and we have been working hard, um, you know, with at and and also our partners to try to define a common like a suite of APIs, or even you know providing flexible op um, options to different providers to specific use cases about this, so that we can all benefit from those reference specifications and enable interoperability both internally and externally. And the last one, I think it is a common value of the open source community is that if we have a mature enough source code, well, you know, service providers like us could actually leverage the source code and perhaps, you know, um, making our own solutions. Um, that is something that we are starting to do, you know, this year. And uh, like Dr. Feng mentioned in, in her keynote yesterday, we have been doing trials with some of the components that we picked from ONAP, uh, Beijing release, and we're doing trials in our use cases, which is dedicated to uh, core network virtualization. Cool. All right, so, um, Ji Hui, uh, from a vendor perspective, um, you know, what are, you know, what, what are you hoping to sort of, you know, um, experience or kind of see the impact of, of, of ONAP? 
Yeah, actually, uh, that's a very good question because uh, I think ONAP provide a very good channel as an open community for different roles to work together and cooperate together and to understand each other better and to, you know, uh, such as to uh, contribute to the, you know, bigger goal together. So that's a very good channel. And we have uh, so much, you know, new trends today, such as 5G, edge computing, AI, all these trends. We need to work together to achieve <laughs> them. And uh, actually, yes. different company have different advantages and accumulations in different fields. And we cannot just, uh, you know, work alone today. It's a sh such, you know, a huge world. So we need to uh, combine the advantages from different companies together to achieve a goal. And uh, ONAP could be a future de facto, you know, inf uh, industry uh, standard. So maybe towards that goal, uh, all of us can, you know, based on the same understanding to contribute that. For example, you know, VMware already initiated the multi wing project with uh, several other partners together with uh, AT&T, China Mobile, Intel, Microsoft, AM, AM Docs together to, you know, provide a cloud agnostic support to the cloud, uh, to the own app. Actually, that's a, a start point. We try to contribute more to achieve, you know, a better future together. So. Do you have, I mean, Ala, do you have anything to add? I mean, you know, I know you spend a lot of time thinking about use cases. Excuse me. <coughs> Last day of the conference, my voice always goes. Um, you, know, for, you know, sort of being down, at, you know, kind of in the use case discussion, um, you know, has that impacted, you know, sort of any, you know, your company's direction or, you know, has that, you know, had, you know, sort of positive or kind of unexpected impact, you know, for y'all sort of being in those use case conversations, you know, to your point of understanding working together actually in the open source. Yeah, so basically, as, as I as said, I'm chairing the use case subcommittee of ONOP, actually since its inception. And you know, at the beginning, we started from uh, actually merging the code base of Ecomp and OpenO and showcasing it on some use cases uh, which were required in the very first release. Again, the major goal was actually to showcase that the code base works. Those use cases were residential VCP, Volt, and virtual DNS, virtual firewall. But then, moving forward in Beijing release, the major focus was on non-functional requirements. And now that we are in Casablanca, and especially moving forward to Dublin, you know, which really gets us closer to some real deployments, really, you know, get to implement many more use cases which are demanded by industry right now and will be demanded in the future. And as a fact, yesterday, for instance, we had a panel on 5G and edge automation, which are becoming very relevant. And, you know, we had, like, I think, seven sessions in parallel. So I was a bit concerned how many people will come to the room. The room was full, actually. So that only shows how relevant, you know, this thing is to industry. Because, again, we are moving to uh, the real deployments, hopefully. And then, you know, the real feedback from service providers is needed. And actually, you know, what I was also trying to achieve being a use case subcommittee chair is to get as many feedback from service provider as possible, both in the proactive way, then they bring their requirements, and then they answer on questions that we might have. Now, as a company position, I think it goes in the same way. So, you know, of course, you know, each one of us works in the community, but also represents its own company. And uh, leading on of activities internally, you know, I come back and say, okay, so we have that feedback from service provider X, we have this feedback from service provider Y, those use cases are needed, and that somehow, you know, influences also our roadmap, and where we want to influence on up in which direction, clearly 5G and edge automation are those areas that we are becoming more and more involved. Right. Isn't, I, I don't know, I would like to add something. So. Uh, today, uh, the ONAP community represents, uh, uh, I mean, a wireless provider that serves 70% of the global wireless subscriber. So it means that, yes, we are speaking about deployment in production. Of course, AT&T has the platform deployed since more than three years. 
Uh, I know, uh, Lingli, you have a friendly user as well since a long time with the OpenO component, and, and now you are integrating additional components. Bell Canada has already started to move in production, but we are only three, so we will need, and, and I know Orange just released an RFP to invite uh, their vendors also to be on app compliance. So one of the challenge will be through the use case community to the architecture is to understand what are we missing so additional carriers can consume it uh, in their premises and now it will really become a, a worldwide platform and, and already recognized as a standard platform, but in reality, it had to be in production. Yeah. Yeah, if I may add, I think, yeah. uh, you know, the work uh, the use case subcommittee led by Ella has been doing a fantastic job. Um, because, you know, ONAP is a huge platform, and thanks for the contribution from, from uh, you know, also uh, Catherine's team. But it, sometimes, you know, um, other service providers would struggle in understanding its power and how it can apply it to their real, realistic use case. And use case subcommittee tried to collect all the ideas from different service providers and share their ideas and combine. Combine them and map them into functional or non-functional requirements with the help of architecture subcommittee, which kind of like filling the gap between the service provider. They're talking you know, in their language, in their requirements. But the PTLs behind them, who are supporting, who would be supporting delivering the features in the release cadence, they're speaking in their language. But use case subcommittee and architecture subcommittee together, they're just bridging them and did a very good job. Yeah, I totally agree uh, with Ling Li because we have noticed that uh, the, the PTL were working some time in silo, but really uh, focusing on their project and only start to interact with the other components when they need to have a flow that they need to validate together. So another opportunity of improvement will be to endure, uh, thanks to the architecture team and the use case committee, to start to demonstrate additional end-to-end -end flow or um, more demo. So it can not only, we don't evangelize anymore the platform, but people start now to understand how to use it, how to tweak it uh, from a VNF perspective. I, I mean, uh, uh, in order to, uh, for the VNF vendors, they can already test their VNF before they commercialize, commercialize them and, and sell them back uh, to the carrier. So it's, it's a kind of academic research environment. Uh, but again, we, we, we need to break this type of silos. It does not mean that people are not working together. That's not what I meant. But due to the fact that we have, I think, Lingli, we have 30 projects. Yeah. Uh, as an open source, it's quite big. We know there are open source who are even, that are even bigger. But that's a challenge since uh, at the beginning, I think. But we are working well. I mean, uh, it, it's a challenge, but uh, it's nothing, uh, nothing it's impossible. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, like, that's one uh, of the things I love about being in open source, right, is that there always seems to be this sort of <clears throat> focus on continuous improvement, right? Yeah. You know, I think people, yeah, we have a certain, I think, pragmatism, I think, often in open source communities where we're aware of what could be optimized, right? And sometimes when people hear us talk about this could be better, they assume we're talking about a problem when we really just always want everything to be better. I would actually echo for, for that one, yes. Uh, Ala, your use case subcommittee played a very good um, and an important role to balance. Just like uh, yesterday, we had a kind of long hour until every, the, this building kicked us out of here. I'll talk about the balance between new use case and also the S3P. Because on one side, we want the, the OLAB has a huge code base. On one side, we want it uh, stable. And on the other side, the community um, and industry will not get excited if we don't have new use case added to support the new use case for each release. So the balance you guys need to keep. Of course, because OLAP is huge, just like uh, Catherine said, we currently have 30 projects. And also, some of project also has a sub-project, and each project is kind of huge. Um, use case subcommittee, architect subcommittee, and also modeling subcommittee. This subcommittee, I think, is very, very important for 
the OLAP community in a way to define some kind of unified architecture to balance between those solo of each project, provide the use cases as a requirement, and also architecture how to implement that end-to-end -end flow, how to interact from each other, and also the standard API of, of data model uh, in between those kind of projects. I think uh, uh, those sub is very important, and also you guys all did a fantastic job on that one. Of course, we could do better <laughs> in the future. <laughs> but but, uh, but I, the I, more I, use case that about we have, but the more load we'll get to you <sighs> for integration. Yeah, and surely well, for I was about to say, project. if we're talking about the number of projects, Helen, you do God's work, and you know, yeah, the, the, the difficulty of the job being the integration PTL, I think, is one of those things that cannot be overstated for any open source project. You have to help pull all that kind of stuff together. So you know, how do you approach that, and how does that work? Um, actually, that's the interesting part and also exciting <laughs> part. <laughs> um, Maybe I'm the person really like to take a challenge. If <laughs> <laughs> um, I was earlier scanning for the audience to see if Phil's over here. Um, last, last ONS at the North American, we discussed OLAP is a fat baby. <laughs> <laughs> They're teasing about fat baby um, of OLAP. In one side, OLAP has a huge code base. That's a very big. Probably that is the biggest open source I have been working with so far. But it's a baby in a way. Um, it's not really mature or stable at this kind of point as we expected, uh, as people hope. I mean, um, the community are doing a very, very good job on this one. So integrate them together is not an easy job. For the integration team, <laughs> The team did a fantastic job. They need to be a, a cloud admin. They need to be a <laughs> network system engineer. They also need to be Java de developer, Python developer, a lot of, lots of, lots of skills. So you could put those things uh, together. Thanks for uh, the OLAP community. And uh, since we have uh, many developers more, so I especially um, appreciate them uh, for the whole support and the collaboration and also trust to put two successful releases, just like earlier we said, uh, we're matching the third one. We already passed uh, M4 milestone and we're doing good job. Of course, we could do better in lots of ways. For example, uh, the architect could design better to make the, all the project could be more seamlessly working together right now. I definitely could see a lot of code is not really uh, married together night, a, a, a great zero basically this kind of piece and uh, to support other use case. Sorry, we have some hard coded code. <laughs> and also we have some kind of uh, branch workaround on those areas. Definitely we could do better in the future release and uh, I think we have confidence to make that better and also provide more automation. Early, I also responsible for Catherine talking about be more agile. She said it's help us. Actually, <laughs> it also has a um, higher requirement for the integration team and the whole OLAP as well. If we need to continue the release, even though that is our dream, that is great, but continuous release requires very, very high uh, automation and CICD, the whole tool chains over there mm -hmm. uh, with uh, such a big code base and also so many uh, things over there, uh, it's very challenging. Like, um, I put the four layers of test modeling uh, in the OLAP community, um, unit test, CSIT testing, and also um, uh, on the component there, like a pyramid testing, and then we have end-to-end -end testing. I expect all to be automated. But right now, each of the layer, we don't get 100%, which will make next layer even higher. Like yesterday, when we, we passed M4 last week, this, as yesterday, when I checked, the progress of pairwise testing. I don't see any results <laughs> at this moment. So we have, we have quite some work to do. Could do better. 
<laughs> but, but I think cross I my finger. <laughs> I think I've put in place already great tools. Uh, yeah. I mean, with the automation that uh, your team and, and the committee did, I mean, I'm thinking about the fact that now at any times we know if all the labs are up, we have a uh, great, great uh, graph uh, the, that anybody can access um, from the community to, to see if the application is up in the different labs that, that we have. You also um, check if the container are restarting, so focusing on the stability. So we, we are building up. So uh, yeah. don't give up. You are yeah. great. No, no, no. I, I just, yeah, I'm very <laughs> optimistic on this one. Like yesterday, Orange Erica and his team demonstrated some very good uh, uh, um, CSAD from the OpenFV community. We can leverage some of them, just like I earlier said, um, use their tools could test if the cloud is ready to do some kind of basic check and layer by layer the check on, on sense and then could get some kind of sense um, move forward. We, we, we're definitely looking forward to that, but I just kind of say OLAP is very, very unique open source project. So we need to handle it in a, in a relatively different way. We maybe needed to create something pretty unique, specific for OLAP. Even the industry standard IT is agile. Uh, or continuous release that kind of model if, if that is a good one. At least I don't see that could happen in next while to release because a lot of lots of realities. OLAP as a platform uh, is different than other um, open source. They could do a service like a cloud native or those things, even though people talk about that one as a buzzword. But I think if this is a correct model for OLAP, because OLAP is a platform, we want it relatively stable, and also the dependency among that 138 Docker images currently that we have, and it's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had to say the, uh, the operational ONAP manager project uh, did a fantastic job to work on the containerization. Zingui, maybe you would like to share with us what you did with the Multivim, because if we are able to deploy it on different environments, I think there have been some work uh, that you were leading. I totally uh, agree, because yeah. actually I come from IT world. Yep. As a society, you know, this is a very good channel for everyone to understand each other better. So I think the use case driven integration is a very good window to bridge you everyone together. We already have a very good CI CD infrastructure from different communities, Big Data Hadoop, OpenStack, OpenFV. Actually, we can tightly work together to see if this is a, you know, what's the best practice for this community. And we can work together to identify our best way to move forward. Yeah. Well, okay, and I am certainly a believer in CI, CD. I, I have gotten that religion um, completely, so I, it's great to hear that. So, <clears throat> you know, we're, we're, you know uh, we've had a lot of good discussion, and, you know, one of the things that I really appreciate about this panel is a lot of times when you're a woman in the tech industry and you're invited on stage, you're invited to talk about being a woman in tech while you're talking about being a woman in tech on stage. Um, you're you don't often get the opportunity to actually talk about your work or to be a woman in tech. You always are sort of in this meta space. And we've just had, you know, I think 30, you know, 30 minutes of conversation with six women who are leaders in um, a very important uh, open source community here, talking about our vision and our challenges and the technology and the use cases. And I think that's amazing. But I also think that we would, you know, sort of be remiss if we didn't take just a little bit of opportunity to kind of say, you know, it's a positive exception. You know, when Ala was proposing this panel, she was like, it's great because, you know, um, ONAP is a positive exception in that there are so many women leaders. Um, there are a number in OPNFV um, as well. Um, you know, and I just like to, you know, maybe, you know, ask some of the panelists, I'll start with you, Ala, since, you know, this was, this was your grand vision, um, this panel. Um, do you think there's anything in particular about ONAP or open source? Um, that you think has given rise to, you know, having this many women in influential positions? 
Yeah, so we've been discussing it really because I think it is quite unique in the industry that we have so many <coughs> female leaders. But actually thinking about it, you know, open source environment is not only about technical side of the story, but mostly I would say about, you know, emotional and, uh, you know, psychology, understanding people, working with people, because you know, you're not a leader because you were assigned by someone. Yes, your company can send you uh, to work on open source. Eventually, your skills are determined, your skills to work in community are determined by how people, if people listen to you, if people are ready and willing to follow you, and how they follow you, and whether you indeed, you know, have that force, you know, to convince people, not to force people, because again, this is not a company that someone appointed to you. This is a much more complicated society than you have to prove your skills, your social skills also on the constant basis and this is the place where actually women can play a key role because you know we do have those skills I would say. So and, and we face it really in ONAP. In ONAP we do have all these women that you can see on the stage you know, we lead the activities you know and in general what also I would also like to touch what can be done more because uh, the fact is that we do have quite a few, you know, leading women. We do not have uh, that many developers or I would say I would like to see more developers or I would like to see more, you know, women becoming PTL and even, you know, even more coming to the leading position. And probably the way to do that would be, you know, having some joint activities, you know, putting some emphasis to that. As a fact, we had, you know, the day before yesterday, we had a women lunch sponsored by Linux Foundation. I think it was great, uh, you know, an opportunity to meet with each other. And probably we have to do the same inside the phone app, you know, when we have developer forums, you know, encourage all those newcomers or developers, uh, you know, to come, to get to know each other, to, to get them excited about the opportunity which open source actually provides here, which I think is quite unique. Thank you. So any other comments? And, you know, and I also, just any kind of comments on sort of culture. I mean, I live, you know, sort of very near Silicon Valley. There's a lot of conversation going on about women in tech in Silicon Valley. I think it's kind of fascinating. I'm the only American up here. Um, you know, you know are, are there things that you think that you find for yourselves where you're coming from either company-wise or geographically, culturally, that um, you, know, you think are lessons that um, you'd like sort of the, the you know, broader folks to take that you've maybe experienced um, from a you know, positive point of view? Because you know, how can we, you know, that sort of ethos, how can, how can we do better, how can we be better? Perhaps not from, you know, female, from the gender side, but I see, you know, um, people from Asia, uh, they turn to be more reserved, and especially, uh, you know, when they're from a technical, you know, background. Uh, sometimes the, it could be, you know, hard for them to speak up and express themselves, especially if it is like a um, opposing, uh, like an uh, opinion. And sometimes it's because, you know, uh, they are afraid they would be making a technical mistake. But a personal experience from myself is that, you know, you should always speak up if you think differently. Otherwise, there will be no meaning for you to be within this community. You are here because you're representing yourself and also the company behind you and also the partners behind you. So you are here, you are welcome here because you will be adding value by speaking up. So um, I've always, you know, encouraging, you know, our Chinese participants, also from my partners, um, or inside my team, to speak up. And sometimes we are very appreciated that, you know, people from Western world will be very patient in, you know, accommodating our, you know, not so good English and hearing our opinions. And I think. Um, there are a lot of forums in, in ONAP and other communities that more and more Asian participants, and also some of them are you know, in the leadership position, so their voice needs to be heard, and it is, has been a more and more you know, appreciated. Cool. I also want to add a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I feel, um, as a woman working in the high tech, very lucky um, of this sense, and also, I, I guess, uh, most of the women in here as well is yes, like uh, uh, the support we get from our families and all other things. Like when we're here, uh, our families take care of our kids and my cats. 
<laughs> Everything uh, that kind of work I definitely appreciate. Uh, only with their support, we could do whatever uh, we need to do. A uh, lot of time on the society, the reason why from actually from the um, elementary to from the uh, from the undergraduate uh, uh, school, you could see in the STEM field, there's much much less women is because. The society, the parents, a lot of environment, the influence, who caused that. But I feel I'm very lucky uh, to get encouraged to pursue my dream. And also, secondly, I really appreciate my company to support us to working with that. Uh, you know, that's a lot of investment for the integration team to put full-time job to basically purely work for the community to get all those kind of things to happen. Uh, that's a lot of, lots of uh, commitment, so I feel um, very appreciated. Certainly, I also want to encourage the women um, to do things. A lot of time, I feel the open source, uh, it's probably it's a very good career for women to choose because we are good at, um, good at we are very social, and also, when we are even already in the high tech, well, technically very strong, and uh, we could do very, very good job in this kind of field. And also, as a result, we could also influence other women so they could uh, participate in the high tech world more. That's probably some kind of contribution we could do for the society. <laughs> All right, well, we are out of time, um, so I would really like to thank all of you for being up here. Let's give our panelists a round of applause, please. <clears throat> yeah, and, and I just hope that all of you, um, as you go out, um, just, you know, always be aware of how you are making the community more welcoming to people who don't speak English as a first language, who are women, who um, are from different racial backgrounds, um, who are LGBT. We are greatest when we are, we are greatest and strongest when we are diverse, inclusive, and hear from everyone. I have been very impressed with, open, with the open source community that I have been in um, for the past four years. I think it's amazing, and let's go out and make it even, even better. Um, that's what we do as a community, so um, uh, great. And um, we are now, uh, if y'all can go on and leave the stage, um, if you, if you want to, y'all can go on and go. Okay. The panel's over. Um, <laughs> thank you again. <laughs> <laughs>